What if everything we owned and everything we think we own of our body parts could speak? How paranoid would we be about our own hearts contradicting us and our own bodies, our homes, our devices testifying against us? And the trickiest of all of those is the heart because sometimes we're not even so sure of what's in our hearts. We might see what our hands and our feet do, but it's really what's in our hearts when we act that counts most. And you have this incident where Abu Dawood, Rahimullah Ta'ala, the famous hadith author, he said that I said to Imam Ahmed, Rahimullah, I wrote this book for the sake of Allah. And Imam Ahmed said to me, that's a serious claim. Instead say that this is something my heart has been made to incline towards. So I did it. SubhanAllah, it's to that level. Like, are you sure you did this for Allah? Because the intentions are so volatile and can switch on us at any moment. And in general for ourselves, فَلَا تُزَكُّوا أَنفُسَكُمْ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنِ اتَّقَى Do not claim purity for yourselves because Allah knows who indeed is pious. If you feel like you did something for Allah, you don't have to constantly tell other people that you did something for Allah. Now, as far as what you assume of other people, let them always be good assumptions. And even then, the Prophet ﷺ said, if you want to praise someone, say, أَحْسِبُ فُلَانًا وَاللَّهُ حَسِيبُ وَلَا أُزَكِّي عَلَى اللَّهِ أَحَدًا I consider such and such a person to be good, but at the end of the day, Allah is his only true assessor, and I cannot claim anyone for sure to be pious in his sight, because only Allah knows who we really are. And on the day of judgment, Allah is going to bring forth all of these things that were silent in this world to speak, either for us or against us. At this point on the Day of Judgment, you're already well aware that your deeds can speak. They've been personified since you've been in the grave. But while you're standing before Allah, He suddenly causes so much more to speak. In that same hadith where the Prophet ﷺ spoke about the servant being brought forth and reminded of his favors and then his forgetfulness of Allah, the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah calls forth another servant. فَيَقُولُ لَهُ مِثْلَ ذلك. Allah says to him similar things. He reminds him of his favors upon him. The difference is that this person will say when asked if he remembered the meeting with Allah, يَا رَبْ آمَنْتُ بِكَ وَبِكِتَابِكَ وَبِرُسُلِكَ وَصَلَّيْتُ وَسُمْتُ وَتَصَدَّقْتُ My Lord, I believed in you. I believed in your book. I believed in your messengers. And I prayed and I fasted and I gave charity. And he'll be going on and on and on until Allah says, Ha huna idan. Stop for now. Now we're going to produce our witnesses against you. And the Prophet ﷺ said that this person, Who is it that is going to bear witness against me? I'm pretty sure no one saw this or that or heard this or that. And in one narration, he even challenges Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, La illa shahidan min nafsi. I only accept a witness from myself. And Allah responds and says, The angels are sufficient and you are sufficient. Kafa You yourself are sufficient of a witness against yourself. So his mouth is sealed and it's said to his thighs, Takallam, speak and then to his flesh, speak, and then to his idam, to his bones, speak. Today we have sealed their mouths and their hands and feet will speak and bear witness against them. And as every part of your body comes forth in the form of a human witness, they say to their skins, why are you testifying against us? I was trying to protect you. If we go to hell, then you're going to be the one that suffers. It's Allah who caused us all to speak, just as He caused anything that He wants to, to speak. Now, this is not the average person. To be clear, the Prophet said, that this is the hypocrite. And this is the one who Allah is angry with. May Allah not make us amongst them. But it shows us the capability of the limbs to speak. So if your deeds can speak and your limbs can speak, those things which you use to wrong others can speak as well. And one of the defining traits of the hypocrites 
who were of course merely pretending to be believers, was that they hated to spend in charity or in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remember, money and power were what they truly worshipped. So what was the first thing they tried to eliminate from the religion after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu They wanted to get rid of zakah because they're materialists and they were trying to accumulate these mountains of gold, even if that meant abusing the religion to do so. And the Prophet Sallallahu gave a severe warning to those who abandoned zakah. He said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, anyone whom Allah has given wealth, but he does not pay its zakah, then on the day of resurrection, his wealth will be presented to him in the shape of a poisonous snake with two poisonous glands in its mouth. And it will encircle itself around his neck and bite at his face and say, Ana maluk, ana kenzuk, I am your wealth, I am your treasure. Then the Prophet ﷺ recited, Those who withhold in miserliness what Allah has given them out of his grace should not take it as good for them. Rather, it is bad for them because whatever they meanly withhold will be hung around their necks on the day of resurrection. And then places and possessions, they start to speak as well on the day of judgment. The day that all of the secrets of the earth are brought forth. Again, for the repentant believer, the inevitable sins are forgiven. So you're not to despair as long as you're prepared for this moment. And by the same token, the places of goodness are also going to come to your defense. And if you're sincere and trying to be on the side of righteousness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah will forgive those things that the limbs have witnessed and that those places have witnessed so long as they were not intentional and done in you know, extended periods of hypocrisy. Now for the wicked, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ما بكت عليهم والسماء والأرض. Neither the heavens nor the earth shed tears for them. Ibn Abbas ta'ala he said that for the righteous person, the place of your sajda, your prostration, it cries when you depart from the earth. And now your place of sujood is coming forth to testify on your behalf. Now what about those, for example, who made Umrah or Hajj, or they intended to do so sincerely? The Prophet ﷺ said about the black stone, Wallahi, لَيَبْعَثَنَّهُ اللَّهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ لَهُ عَيْنَانِ يُبُصِرُ بِهِمَا وَلِسَانٌ يَنْطِقُ بِهِ يَشْهَدُ عَلَى مَنْ اسْتَلَمَهُ بِحَقْ By Allah, Allah will raise the black stone on the day of resurrection with two eyes by which it sees and a tongue that it speaks with and it will testify to whoever touched it in truth. In another narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, يَأْتِ الرُّكْنُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْظَمَ مِنْ أَبِي قُبَيْسِ لَهُ لِسَانٌ وَشَفَتَانٌ The Yemeni corner of the Kaaba will come forth on the Day of Judgment, greater than Abu Qubais. Abu Qubais is this huge mountain right next to the Haram in Mecca. So again, a mountain. The Prophet ﷺ said the Yemeni corner will have a tongue testifying for all of those who touched it. Then you have the animals. Remember the bird and the camel that were complaining to the Prophet ﷺ in a way that only he could hear? Well, now it's the Day of Judgment and the animals come forth as witnesses for you or against you. And the Prophet ﷺ said that whoever kills a small bird for play, it will come on the Day of Judgment and say, Ya Rabb, inna fulanan qatalani abathan, wa lam yaqtulni li manfa'a. Oh my Lord, so and so killed me for sports and not for any benefit. On the other hand, the Prophet ﷺ mentioned about the seeker of knowledge. Yastaghfiru lahu man fil samawati wa man fil ard. That everything in the heavens and the earth seeks forgiveness for that person. Even the fish in the depths of the ocean, the birds high in the sky, they're coming on the day of judgment and they're testifying. Why? Because the knowledgeable believer is mindful of everything and everyone around them and realizes they have a responsibility with what they have been given to everything that they encounter. And if Allah is going to make our limbs bear witness, and Allah is going to make our possessions bear witness. Then the places that we go, the environment and the animals. Imagine the weight of the testimony of people we encounter when they are brought forth to bear witness for or against us. <laughs>